When I first saw this trailer for the Clove Hitch Killer, I had I am not a serial killer vibes. I was struggling with the idea of investing my time in a film that was telling the same story we have all heard before. But a few of you guys prompted me to check this film out. And in turn, I found that the Clove Hitch Killer was a different narrative altogether. In fact, it was one I hadn't seen before. The film, set in a small town in Kentucky, has a strong Christian theme. Tyler, played by Charlie Plummer, is a simple boy, and he's close with his picture-perfect family. Don, his father, played by Dylan McDermott, is a leader at the Boy Scouts, and he is an upstanding part of the community. So when Tyler finds a taboo magazine clipping of a woman gagged in his father's car, he begins to doubt everything he knows. For me, there's a lot of aspects in this film that really make it shine. The first one I want to talk about is the Christian theme that is really interesting because it really contrasts with the rawness of the subject matter. Tyler is such a sheltered good boy and he is completely scrutinized when he finds this piece of paper and he is called a perv and he's trying to make excuses and he is at the lowest he feels like he could go until the bottom drops out underneath him and he realized the bottom is so much further. It's like the floor beneath him collapsed into the true dark depths of humanity. Or for us, the deep web, I guess. But the structure is where the film takes all the chances, and for me, they really paid off. The film flips on itself and changes perspectives, and for me, I usually don't like this kind of trickery. I don't like when you aren't given all of the possible answers, solutions, paths for a film, and then afterwards, you're shown something that you didn't know and you didn't have the information for. I feel like that is redirection in the worst kind of way, and it really does feel like you're tricking the audience so it doesn't feel like a good payoff. I find it to be bad storytelling and a really off-putting way of misleading the audience but in this film it does it in such an interesting way that it gives you this information that you didn't even know that you were craving and it's just beautiful and unnerving. The final reason this film really worked for me was the power play and without giving away too much this film disguises itself as a horror drama but it's not until you're into the story that you realize that you're watching a psychological horror. The film emphasizes the delusional psychological states of its character and the sheltered life which is shattered making waves destroying everything solid in its path and the acting is very well paced and it's truly haunting. The dialogue is thoughtful and strong, every line seems to have a purpose, and when there's no discourse, the impact is felt in the haunting silence. But there was some great lead into this sinister tone, and the characters are very well established, and through some interesting encounters, we grow bonds. Especially with Tyler, the main character, we are right there with him when one of his peers <laughs> says this really hilarious line, uh, talking about this strange girl that's hanging around the church. We should pray for her and call the cops. It was an awkward moment that was quite funny and really endearing, and usually, again, this film breaks a lot of the rules, especially for me. I know a lot of people also have the issue when horror breaks its tone, and in this film, when there are those kind of funny moments, it should pull you straight out, but instead of doing that, it makes you really connect with the characters and form a bond. It really helps you grow a connection and understanding for Tyler and his environment. And of course, if you want to talk about techniques, the film is absolutely beautiful. It's flawless. It's definitely shot in a short f-stop, so it's very beautiful to look at, soft in parts, sharp in others, where you need to look, it directs you. It's also got some really muted colors and it's just very delicate to look at, which I guess you could interpretate as, you know, the fragileness of their lives and everything they know getting shattered. But does it mean that? Probably not. It's just beautiful to look at. The Clove Hitch Killer is a film with direct purpose and it delivers it in a surprising, unpredictable way. It relies on our bonds with the characters to keep us involved during every twist and turn. And we are just putty in the filmmaker's hands as we are left to hang on every reaction to every disturbing moment. We were promised moody cinematography, beautiful natural lighting in the world's most creaky house. And I'm not kidding, that house is so creaky. <laughs> Did anyone else notice that? But it delivered so much more, a story structured and told in a way that makes you question humanity. And that's true horror, right? 
I'm gonna give this one a personal score of eight, a scare score of four, and an originality score of eight. I think that this story was very clever in the way it was delivered, the acting was superb, and I loved the power play. It was just so different to what I expected, and of course I love that in any film when it's a good difference. And I did first put this down in my letterbox as a seven, but then I couldn't stop thinking about it, so I think it really deserves the eight. If you haven't seen this film, I strongly recommend it. And thank you so much for letting me know about this film. You guys have some good taste. I'll talk to you guys very soon. Stay spooky.